I'm Anil Kumar sharing with you an excellent question on absolute functions. The question here is draw the graph of x plus absolute x equals to y plus absolute y. You can pause the video, answer the question and then look into my suggestions. Now whenever we have absolute functions involved we should always see them as a piecewise function. For example absolute x really means that it is equals to x if x is greater than or equals to 0 and is minus x if x is less than 0. Correct? So in that case the left side of this equation which is x plus absolute x could be written as a piecewise function with combination for x greater than or equal to 0 and x less than 0. So if x is greater than 0, let me write here, if x is greater than or equal to 0, then absolute x will be positive x, x plus x will be 2x, correct? If x is less than 0, if x is less than 0, in that case, absolute x can be replaced by minus x, and what you get is x minus x, which is 0, correct? So x plus absolute x basically will be equals to 2x if x is greater than or equal to 0 and will be equals to 0 if x is less than 0, right? Similarly, for the right side also, we can write y plus absolute y as combination with a piecewise function when y is greater than or equal to 0 or less than or equal to 0, right? So, so we can say if y, absolute y can be defined as y for y greater than or equal to 0 and is equals to minus y for y less than 0. Therefore, y plus absolute y will be equals to, if y is greater than or equal to 0, I will replace absolute y by y, y plus y is 2y. And if y is less than 0, in that case, I'm going to replace absolute y by minus y, and y minus y is 0, so we get 0. So that is how these functions could be defined. And now clearly, based on this piecewise function combination, we have four different cases, right? So, so we'll consider these four cases separately. So, uh, okay, so let's divide this page into these four cases. Uh, okay, so let's say, I hope this is sufficient space. Okay, let's work it out. Now, we could take a case when both are positive, right? That is to say, when x is greater than or equal to zero, and y is also greater than or equal to 0, right? In that case, so we are considering the first case, which is this portion, right? So in this case, we could write this expression as x, what we have here is, instead of writing, If x is greater than or equal to 0, then x plus absolute x is equal to 2x, right? So we have we are solving this equation. Let me write down the equation first. It will be easier. So this is the equation which we are solving, correct? Let me write down all intervals first. So first combination, let us take as both positive, And then let's take this positive and that negative. So let's take x greater than or equal to 0, but y is less than 0. Okay, and now let me take x less than 0, and with that we'll take y greater than or equal to 0, and when x is less than 0, we'll take y less than 0, right? So, so these are four cases which we'll solve individually, right? Let me also, as we, I mean, work on this, uh, let me kind of sketch here 
what we want to sketch is that function right so let me make a space here for that okay so we'll sketch the function here so this is our positive x-axis and that is the y-axis correct now when we are saying that x is greater than equal to 0 and y is greater than equal to 0 we are in this quadrant correct we are in this quadrant so we are in quadrant 1 x is greater than equal to 0 right and y is also greater than equal to 0 correct now if x is greater than equal to 0 then x is equals to 2x right so is this equation I mark that when x is greater than or equal to 0 x plus absolute x is 2x so we could replace this with 2x equals to the y value is 2y equals to 2y solving this we get x equals to y correct so we get x equals to y which basically is a straight line and this straight line is in our case 1 which is basically quadrant 1 is it okay this is quadrant 1 so we could sketch this line kind of like this you see that so this becomes x equals to y perfect now let's look into the the second part which is when we say x is greater than or equal to 0 that means this side and y is less than 0 that means this side so we are working now in this quadrant right we are working in this quadrant so, so basically, we are working now in quadrant 2. So let me write down quadrant 2 now. In this area, right? Sorry, 4. This area. So in this area, when x is greater than or equal to 0, then the left side, let's rewrite the equation. Okay, that's good. Absolute y. So if x is greater than or equal to 0, x plus absolute x is 2x, so we get 2x here equals to, and y is less than 0, so we'll take up this value, which is 0. So what we get here is, as a solution of this equation, x equals to 0 divided by 2, which is 0. So in this particular quadrant, we get x equals to 0 as our solution, right? So in this quadrant, when is x 0? x is 0 along this line. Do you see that? This line. So that becomes x is equal to 0. At every point along the y-axis which is going negative, x is equal to 0. Correct? So that is how we could do this part. Let's do the next part now. We are talking about x less than 0. That means we are on this side. I mean, and y is greater than equal to 0 that means y is positive so we are actually working now in quadrant 2 let's rewrite the equation x plus absolute x equals to y plus absolute y if x is less than 0 if x is less than 0 then x plus absolute x is 0 and if y is greater than or equal to 0 it is 2y y so in this case we get 0 equals to y so the y value is 0 in this case, right? So in quadrant 2, y value is 0, which means this chord, this axis. Is that okay? y is 0 in this. So that is what we get as part of our graph. Correct? Now let's look into the last one, which is both are less than 0, right? So that means both are less than 0, both are negative. So we are now working in quadrant 3 okay so in this quadrant let me write down the equation first okay so if x plus absolute x is less than 0 then the left side is 0 and the right side is also equal to 0 0 equals to 0 means what 0 equals to 0 means every point in this quadrant is part of our solution right so basically we can fill this up so we have this whole thing as a part of solution is that okay so you can say it's a plane this whole quadrant is is a part of our solution do you see that so that becomes the part of our solution and as a whole what we get as a result is that in quadrant one we have a line which is x equals to y right 
and then we have a horizontal line which is going towards minus infinity and a vertical line going towards negative y infinity right and the whole coordinate 3 so that becomes part of our graph which represents x plus absolute x equals to y plus absolute y i'm anil kumar and i hope that this explains the concept well enough you can always share and subscribe to my videos and feel free to post questions thank you and all the best